hello and welcome to the part four in this part we're just gonna add more details to it and uh, uh, we're gonna add some color uh, to our muzzle flash so let's maybe start with color i'm gonna start with gradient map i'm gonna add some uh, some colors to it i'm gonna use the first as a orange yellow and then next one will be full red and i kind of want to like a nice spread in between those two Something like this, maybe. Uh, the next will be glow. And for the glow, I'm just going to use uh, maybe orange color. I'm going to tweak some settings here. So we could get like a nice halo around it. Something like this. I'm going to move it to the side. And next, what I would like to add is some sparks, or some streaks coming from uh, this area outwards. Just a small detail, so I think we just need to design a small system for it. So I'm going to use a shape. I'm going to use something like this. Uh, next will be the bevel. I'm going to use bevel as a mask threshold for our tile sampler. So I'm going to bring a tile sampler next. Plug the bevel into the map uh, mask map input. Change the pattern to disk. I'm gonna reduce the amount maybe to nine by nine. Scale random maybe 0.5. And on X as well, I'm gonna randomize it. My random position to the max and mask threshold maybe 0.5. And I'm gonna invert it as well. So now I'm going to blend this shape with our tile sampler and I'm going to change the mode to subtract. And now obviously I'm just going to increase the size of our tile sampler uh, circles. It should be around here. Okay. What I'm looking for is kind of straight line with the breaks in between. So I'm just going to increase it and now change the position random, trying to find the shape that I, uh, that I need. the scale so we've got like a two shapes basically and break in between those two and so I'm gonna try to use this if it's not gonna work then obviously I'm gonna go back and try to um, manipulate a couple values but for now I'm just gonna use this I'm gonna use trapezoid next I'm gonna stretch it down on top and get rid of the tiling And I'm gonna plug this into splatter circular. I'm gonna use image input. And maybe I'm gonna increase the pattern amount to maybe 30, 32. Radius, um, some randomization as well. And obviously I'm just gonna increase the scale. And scale random as well. The next bit is I actually want to do the symmetry random as well. It seems like it's kind of working on both horizontal and vertical, which is what I want. What else? We could try to add maybe spread to maybe something like 1.5 or maybe 2. No, maybe let's go back to one. Let's see what if what ha gonna happen if gonna add some rings, like maybe one ring, and now play with the radius and scale it down a bit. Okay, so I like what we're getting, which is kind of like sparks and small details. So I'm gonna keep this, although I want those to be a little bit thicker so I think 
I think this could work. Right, so I'm gonna leave it as this. Now I need to, I need to create maybe mask for it because I want this to work in the cone. So I'm gonna use a shape. Like this, turn that into polar, coordinate like this and then blur just in case. But I need to disable the tiling on it. And maybe reduce it to a small amount like one. And now if I just select the shape, you can see this serves as our mask. So I'm gonna blend it with the multiply. And we only getting those uh, when this cone is. Which I think is uh, quite cool. Okay, so now I'm gonna use transform. Transformation, and I'm gonna move it somewhere around here. Or maybe here because I want to run it through slope blur and as our slope I'm gonna use the soft circle shape whoops as you can see we're kind of getting some nice results I'm gonna increase the samples because I want kind of like a motion blur and being added to it right so I think I'm gonna use this and let me see what's gonna happen if I'll blend those two, maybe. So I think that's, that could work. So I'm gonna plug this one on top and this one here. But this one, I'm gonna run it through blur. Right, so those should be very bright in the middle which I think might work pretty good. The next bit, well, what we could try is to duplicate the slope and use the same amount, but with minus value. And maybe blend those two together and see what we could, uh, what kind of results we could get. Let's try this and uh, let's just see if it works with, uh, with our setup. I'm gonna use transform as well as next because I probably need to position it a little bit better. So I'm gonna bring this node as blend, add this to the top in case I have to reduce the opacity and set it to add. Now I can select this transformation node here and just move it around this area, maybe stretch it just a little bit. So I'm gonna plug this into our color setup. I think it could work, although I think we're getting like a, I think this is too big. So let's maybe try to use just those white uh, dots as sparks and kind of losing some shape. So maybe let's replug this by use the slow blur with the, with the smaller intensity, something like maybe and this one on minus three okay I think this one looks better if it's actually if it's got higher value maybe minus eight and now I'm gonna go into this uh, last blend change the opacity on it I think the equal decent distance between those actually is not helping, so I'm gonna go back to the splatter circular and see if I can actually do something about it and basically randomize it. Um, angle no. I think this should be maybe a ring rotation random. I think that could help. Maybe you can we can random use random mask to get rid of some of those elements, which is when we get something like this, that could work. And now I'm just gonna 
uh, adjust my cone. And we got only some of the details. And I'm gonna go back to the tile sampler now and try to uh, maybe adjust some settings on it. So we get a, a little bit different shapes for those sparks. And all those uh, small details. So I'm gonna go with this. I think. I'm gonna reduce the intensity on um, on those uh, tiny little sharp dots, and I think I'm gonna reduce the intensity on our slope blur as well, just a little bit. Right, so we got those uh, main shapes and we got some details as well. Maybe we want those uh, sparks to be a lot smaller, so maybe we can tweak some of the settings on our tile sampler. I have to probably increase the scale of those. Right, so I quite like this, I'm just gonna stick with it. The next bit is that uh, maybe let's try to add like an outline uh, to the shape. So I'm gonna use uh, our shape. I'm gonna use a histogram scan. Because I only need this to be in black and white. I'm gonna duplicate this one and run this one through bevel. So I could get maybe this and this needs to go through the scan again. So we end up with this sort of shape. And now maybe let's try to subtract one from another. I need to reverse the order and this is what we get. So I'm gonna run this through transform because I want it to move this one a little bit. And I think I'm gonna control it with bevel and maybe with contrast on the histogram scan. So I'm just gonna position it a little bit better. Um, and I think I want to stretch it as well. So what we're going to do, I'm just going to use transformation here, rotate it 90, use the, oh, actually I need to do it in here. So I'm going to rotate this one, uh, use trapezoid, stretch the bottom with minus one value. And now rotate it back and use this. I probably want to stretch this one as well, just a little bit and position it slightly better. Right, and we're getting this essentially. So what I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna add this to our main uh, muzzle flash. So I'm gonna use blend, this as add, and before we add it, I'm just going to run it through transform. Uh, maybe through bevel and histogram scan as well, if I want some additional control. And I'm going to plug this into our blend with add. Obviously, that doesn't do anything because our histogram scan position is zero. So I'm going to slightly increase it. I ramp up the contrast and on bevel node I'm actually going to change the distance because I only want some cool shapes there and on transformation I'm just going to move it and maybe scale it up as well so we get this 
outline basically obviously it's very sharp so um, I'm gonna run it through blur and plug this back in now I'm just gonna adjust the um, histogram scan and try to get something that looks uh, a little bit better and I only want some of the shapes so I think that might be cool let's plug it into our color as you can see we're kind of getting some cool shapes I really like this one I'm not happy with this shape so maybe let's try to tweak our trapezoid that we've created here and see if we can adjust some settings on it like this Okay, so I think that's it. To be fair, I'm not sure which I prefer better. Um, right, so what we could do, we could either plug this one in. And we got some cool shapes here, but this one adds another level of details, like those shapes. But I think they might be a little bit too bright, so maybe let's control it through the opacity now. Maybe this will be only as an additional detail as we want our main temperature core to be around this area okay so I think that's it and I hope you're gonna create some interesting muzzle flashes with this one uh, you might either ex um, export the sparks as a separate one and maybe uh, scale them up over time in your particle system to give the impression of actually sparks coming um, from the uh, muzzle as well um, but yeah I hope you learn um, a couple more techniques in this graph uh, and um, yeah see you in the next one thanks for watching